everyone, it's Tammy. Welcome back to my messy desk. I am going to show you guys how to make this cute little card holder. It will hold eight cards and envelopes and even stamps so that we can give these away to people or you could even make them if you were doing a craft fair or something like that. I am planning on giving them away for Christmas. I know it's only June, but I have one, two, three, four, five, six people that I know that I want to make them for, and I've just made this one, and I thought, you know what, I'm going to do a demo and show everyone so that you guys can make them too. They're really fun to make, and they're pretty easy. It takes two pieces of 12 by 12 cardstock, so it's not expensive, and I'm going to my plan is to go to the Target Dollar Spot and buy the cards because you can get eight for a dollar and I thought well I'll get six dollars worth and I will just make card fronts and cover them up or if I really like the card I could just use those cards too but I kind of like to bling up my cards a little bit so I will probably do that but um, I do have example cards that we can put in here um, these are some cute cards that I've made recently that um, will fit right in. They just have to be the A2 size. Four, let's get five or four more. One, two, oh, that one's kind of odd shaped. I won't use that one. That one, two, three. So, how many do I have in here? I'm sorry. One, two, three, four, five, six. And these are all pretty big, like cute decorated cards. Seven. And one more, we'll make eight. Or I could put it in this way, I guess it would make it a little easier. It's just because these are so blown up that they are having a problem going in. And I guess if I did them all together like this, it would make it a little easier too. <laughs> there. So there's eight cards that fit nicely in there. And then as you can see, the envelopes will slide in here. And then you can close it up and tie it. And it makes a really cute little gift. And I think people will really enjoy it because then it gives them opportunity to send cards out, especially when you include the stamps. So let's get started. I'm going to put these back. These are not ones that I will include. They were just examples that I had because I have been making a lot of cards recently. My daughter, I think I've told you guys, is going to be going to college. Not next year, but the year after. And time flies so fast. And I wanted to do this thing where you put um, cards and envelopes ready for them. And it says things like open when you're feeling blue or open when you're feeling happy or open when you're worried or whatever. And I thought it would be really cute to go ahead and get those done so that I could have them ready for her. And I know that I'll do it. So that's my plan. So that's why I've been making so many cards. That was what was my inspiration. And then I've just started enjoying coloring so much that I have just continued. So I went ahead and picked out some paper and I'm going to show you this paper. I think that this was from Close to My Heart and it has the front and back both are decorated they both have a lot of sparkle and shine to them I don't know if you can see that on the camera but it's really pretty and I thought that this would be a cute combination to do a card so I'm going to go ahead and start with this and I also need some ribbons so I think I'm going to use I think I might use pink yeah I think I will use pink and I actually have some pink here maybe I'll just reuse this it's kind of thick, but I think it might be able to work. I don't know how much I'd need out, just as long as I can cover up. Some of it's kind of bit up from whatever it was in. I don't even remember where I got it. I just reuse yarn as I, or ribbon as I can. So I think that this will be long enough, and I think that this will work just fine. So let's give this a whirl. Okay, so first I'm going to decide which one I want to be my base, which is this one. So I'm going to cut this one down first. And you need to cut this so it's six and a quarter by ten and three quarters. So I get out my handy dandy cutter. And I'm going to do 
six and a quarter first, I think. Yeah, that would make sense. So six and a quarter by ten and three quarters. I think it's easiest to start with the smallest cut when you're cutting on one piece of paper so that you can save the most amount of paper. And I even save these little scraps for now until I'm done making it. And then if I just want to throw these little scraps away, I can. Or if I have something I want to reuse with it, I can. Because both of them are double-sided and it's kind of neat. And on this one, I used a piece of this scrap to just write cards on and decorate it a little bit so that the person would know what it was. And then you're going to score this. And I like to cut to turn it over. But I'm going to score it at four and three quarters and at six so I'm going to move my little cutter up well I'll just take it off since it fell off anyway oh, whoops I hit the tripod sorry so I'm going to do four and three quarters and I don't push too hard there is a scoring thing on this but I just don't keep it on by six not by six but at six so four and three quarters and six this is what's going to make your little box so when you fold these and I'm being careful to fold it because of the glitter that's on here ah, it looks like my looks like my score line didn't score all the way through so let me just score that again oh I'm gonna move it to six Push it down a little bit harder this time. And there we go. So this is actually going to be the little book. As you can see, it's like this one. So I'm going to put that to the side for now. And then I'm going to go ahead and cut the um, other piece. And I'm going to do this on yeah definitely this side and I want this to be four and a half by six this is for the outer side just to decorate it and this is just to put a front and back and you could just do a front you wouldn't have to do a front and a back if you didn't want to but I figure since it's still just one piece of paper, I'll just go ahead and do the front and the back. So I'm going to just cut this piece in half. Sometimes they are a little longer than 12 inches, so I'm just going to check. Nope, that looks good. So there's those as well. And I will crop the corners here in just a second. And then I'm also going to take I think no, I think I'll do this one for the card pocket because when I put a piece of paper over it for this the I think I'll do this for the card pocket and then when I put a piece of paper over it sorry I'm not talking as well I will do this one for the card pocket and that way when I do the stamp pocket I can do it in this one and you'll see that a little more and I kind of like that one so Let's do the card pocket first, which is five inches by eight and three quarters inches. So I'm just going to, this doesn't, this isn't eight and three quarters inches wide. So I'm going to do eight and three quarters inch this way. Actually, no, I'm not. I'm going to go ahead and cut two inches off first. And um, this is going to use as the belly band for the envelopes. So let's go ahead and do that one first. So two inches by 12 inches is the belly band for the envelope. I'll put that in there. And then this one needs to be, oh, I think that's not gonna be wide enough now. Well, I will just use this one for the stamp one because I don't know what I'm thinking about. Okay, let's see. If I wanna do the inside of the box, five by eight and three quarters. So this isn't quite five. Um, and then the stamp one is two and a quarter by about three, so I can do it with that. So I'm going to do two and a quarter. 
so I just lied. I'll just do this. It's fine. Two and a quarter by about three is all you need for the stamp pocket. And actually, I think I even made it smaller. I think I left the three, but I made this smaller. Okay, well, I'm just going, okay. This instead of, sorry. So instead of two and a quarter by three, I'm going to do one and three quarters by three. That's better. And then I'm going to score this at every quarter line. So I'm going to turn it over and score this at a quarter inch. This is going to make the stamp pocket. So I'm going to do a quarter inch on two of the short sides and the long side. Or one long side. And then these edges I'm going to just cut off. And I kind of like to do it as a round. I don't know exactly why, but I think I was taught that. And so that's what I just do. And this is going to make the stamp pocket. And let me show you how this works. You'll fold these in, you'll fold these in. And that will hold the eight stamps. So this is going to go on top of the other paper, which I will cut now because I kind of screwed up. And I was going to make this the stamp pocket, but oh well. Okay, so this has to be five by eight and three quarters. Okay, so let's do the eight and three quarters first. Even though I think what I told you before was different, but that's okay. I know this is my last piece. Eight and three quarters. I was trying to save as much cardstock as I could, but I kind of screwed up by five. And now for this one, what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut or score at two inches on every side. So I'm just going to put this at two inches. I like to score down here. I don't know why I'm weird easier for me. So two inches, I guess because I can see the line a little better. And I just score it. This is glittery paper, so I'm kind of trying to get it really good at the glitter area. Two and two. This is going to make a box and it's kind of cool. And two, and finally two on this one. So on the stamp one you only did three sides, on the card one you do all four. I kind of ripped that one. Okay, and I kind of ripped this one as I was scoring it a little bit, as I said, um, just kind of be careful when you're scoring, but it's okay. It's not going to hurt anything. We will make it work, and I'll show you why. Okay, so now you take your little scissors, and you cut up on the long sides of these four little boxes. So up to the score line that you did. So you cut two inches in. This one's kind of hard to see. Maybe if I turn it over. Yeah, that's a little easier. And you do the same thing on the other long side. So you cut both of the long sides up to the score line. So you're cutting it two inches in. So this box that you're making is two by two. And what you'll do is you'll, or this box, the square that you're making, not box. And you fold it on the score lines. And this is going to make a little box. So you take these two in and these two in. 
and as you can see, it makes your little box, and this is what's going to hold your A2 cards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put my tape on these four squares that I just cut out. And I like to make it pretty sturdy, so I like to use probably more tape than necessary. But I just want to make sure that the thing holds it and I don't want it, you know, the cards to be falling out or flimsy. So, and if you guys want to use um, that sticky tape, the red tape, you could do that. I guess I would also use the like mono adhesive tape if you wanted to. I don't know. I'm, I'm not a big fan of that when it's something that I feel like needs to be pretty strong. I really like my ATG gun, and if you guys um, have the opportunity to get one of those, I would highly recommend it, especially if you're doing a lot of paper crafting, because this is really nice um, sticky tape. And then you just bring up your thing to meet it, like that, and you put these in because it just makes it look a little bit nicer. And you just tape it on. And I'm just going to push inside my box just to make sure that it's extra sturdy. Okay, and then I can pick whichever side I'd prefer to put in the box. And then I'm going to tape on this edge. And I just use my hand and I just kind of hold it a little bit steady. I guess I could have, whoops, and I'm not getting any tape out. I guess I could have done this while it was still unfolded, which may have been smarter. Oh. Yeah, maybe I would recommend that instead. Or maybe in this case, use the red tape or whatever. It doesn't seem like this was as hard the last time when I just did the other one. I don't know why it's not cooperating this time. Oh, maybe it's because my tape is running out. There we go. Okay, so let me change that really quick. And you can see where I ripped it. I'm going to go ahead and tape this just with regular tape because it will be hidden. And I don't think anyone would be able to tell that it's there. Just to kind of reinforce it. And I think I'll do one more piece just to be sure. You know, we all make mistakes, so it's okay. Okay, so that has to be why. I don't know if you guys have ever changed this tape, but... I just move this thing to open it up and then I don't know if there's a better way I just pull all this junk out and then I take this and pull that out and then I just have to get another tape which I don't know if I brought one over here because I didn't know I was running out when it gets to the bottom it kind of acts a little bit crazy and that's what it was doing I guess I should have realized that when it was being so crazy but I didn't And I usually buy that off of Amazon, and I usually get like a dozen of them at a time. They're about $3 a piece. But it's so much, you use so much more, or you use so much, you go through a lot less money than when you're using the mono adhesive. It's still a lot cheaper, because this is... I don't know how much you get, but you obviously get a lot. So, let's see. And I always have to look at the directions. Just put it on there, and then I hold this down so that I can spin it around. And then I get it to here, and then I can move this to wherever I need it to be so that I can hook this on. And then I put this on and then it is ready to go 
and the first few are going to not have any tape on them but you can see it it because it says dispenser and then now I'm back to where the tape is so I should be better so I'm going to just go ahead and put a little bit of tape right here oh yeah it's way better <laughs> way easier to move through except for I don't think it's actually stuck to that tape there it goes I'm like wait a minute how come I'm not feeling any tape on there any sticky there we go okay so I'm gonna take oh before I take this I'm going to use my little crocodile corner chopper and I'm going to chop off the corners at a half an inch just to kind of give it a nice fresh look and I'm going to do the same thing with my designer paper I'm just going to cut two of the sides line them up chop them off and I'm going to stick these on before I put that on that would make sense and I also need to stick my ribbon on so here we go it like glides now Okay, and then I also need to put my ribbon on here. So let's see, the crummy end is this end. So I will put this in to leave as much ribbon as I can because I know that this is big, thick ribbon. So you're gonna need more than you think you will. And same with this one. And I'm just eyeballing where the middle is. I guess I could do something to make sure that I'm getting it about even, but I'm almost positive I am. So I'm just going to reinforce this ribbon a few times to make sure that it sticks to the paper and then also to the other paper. And then I'm going to just put this on like this kind of eyeball it to make sure it's in the middle, centered on my page. And if you wanted to do a spine for this, you could do that too. I kind of like to leave the designer paper show, or the bottom base paper showing, because I think it's pretty. So we're getting right along there, aren't we? And now I'm going to stick this on and I want this to be at the bottom and I want it to be centered and up against that base. There we go. And then the same thing with my stamp one. I'm going to tape the the color I want out or the side that I want out I'm going to put tape on that also with ATG tape if you guys don't know or don't have it like see I have tape here it's sticky in there I can like rub it and get it off which is kind of a nice thing so it's as long as it hasn't like totally gotten itself stuck it's not quite permanent I mean you can still kind of peel it up and then if I get it on the edges I just kind of push it on to the itself so that it sticks and then I fold these in and I center this or wherever you, I mean if you want to put it to the side you can wherever you want to put it I am just going to try to center it and though I'm not holding that well there we go And let's put it like that. And stick it on down. And I have a little bit of sticky over here so I can again just move my finger on it to get it off. I don't know why or how that works, but it does every time. So 
So there's that. And then the last thing I need to do is the belly band. And to do this, you just bring these together. And I just use a regular piece of scotch tape. And I tape it together. And because this has the glittery, I'm going to do two because I don't trust glitter holding. And then I kind of just, I don't really like fold it, but I just kind of bend the edges a little bit. And then I use my trusty ATG gun. Ah, except for, <laughs> I keep showing you guys things and they keep messing up. I think it's the glitter on this page, but I'm going to re spin this up a little bit. It's not spinning correctly, or maybe I loaded it wrong. Do, 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 do. Or maybe it's just a wonky there. Maybe I didn't push that down all the way. Because it looked a little wonky. And I'm going to just slide this or stick this into the middle of this side. down and I'm trying to be extra extra stick with this glitter paper because I know that glitter paper doesn't always stick well and that's it so we have made our card holder that we can use as a present and give this to someone with cards already in it and some stamps already in it so they are ready to go and I think it's really cute and really fast and I think that People will like it, and then you can tie this into a bow or into a knot, however you prefer. I don't know how much string there or ribbon there is to make a bow, but I think that there's enough. I'm sure there is. So you can do a cute little bow. Just play with it. I'm not the best at making bows. I think I'll cut these off so that they're at an angle and kind of not frayed. <laughs> this one especially. That wouldn't be very nice to give to someone. Oh no, my whole back end fell off. This ribbon, I'm or this glitter paper, I'm telling you, is not the best. So maybe the next one I would suggest not doing glitter for both the base and the top. And if you have to, you can glue it down with some decoupage or some Elmer's or whatever but there we go that's that's the gist and that's it and I think it's really cute and I think that somebody will really enjoy getting that as a present and I'm going to do this as Christmas presents even though I know it's just June I'm just keeping them so that I will have them ready for when it is Christmas because Christmas gets to be such a busy season I like to do some of my do-it-yourself projects early that way I'm all ready and prepared and all is good Oops. And I'm just going to cut that one again. There we go. Throw that away. And the edges look nice. And if you wanted to, you could put a little bit of glue on the edges, or you could um, burn the edge just a little bit with a lighter or a candle or something so that they don't come off or don't fry them. And I kind of like to do that, but I might just, because I have some glue handy here, I may just put a little bit of glue on them for now. Let's just try that. Or they even have, well this glue is, well this glue is pitiful, it doesn't even work. I need to cut that edge again now. Good grief. Okay, well, just pretend like I did that and it looked all nice. But they have like no fray stuff too. I have some in my sewing kit that you can also use. There, see how nice? <laughs> okay, well that's it guys. I hope that you like it. I hope that you enjoy it. I hope you make one. And if you do, please let me know below. And I think that your friend or coworker or sister-in-law, those are all the people that I'm giving them to. Friends, coworkers, sisters-in-law. And I think that they will like them. And I think that they'll especially like that they're homemade. And then you put homemade cards inside. And it's an extra bonus. So thanks a lot for watching. See you next time.